Hello there. Welcome to the next episode of Adding the Alchemy podcast. My name is Angela, one of your co-hosts. And I am Angie, your other co-host. Okay, so today we're just going to continue our discussion basically on where we are going, what is happening with us. It's been a crazy few weeks since we've last recorded. And so I have a lot to share and I think you do too. So um, one of the things that we were talking about in our last episode was about ego death and looking at our egos and all of these things. And when I watched that episode back, I realized a lot of those concepts that I um, brought to, brought out, I now have a deeper perspective on. So I wanted to kind of talk about that as I'm going through this healing process of these egos. And I made a list of all of the egos, the, the characters, I like the word characters. It kind of is more humanized, I guess, <laughs> the word characters. So basically we create these characters in our lives to not feel past emotions, to not feel the pain of when we were a child and to not, and to receive the things that we need because we didn't feel like we could ask for what we needed. A lot of times, you know, that's one of the things that we're conditioned is to not be too needy and not, you know, all these things. So I made a list and I wrote at the top, I ensured myself love and attention and that I didn't have to feel the pain of the past by first one is food extreme overeating I've had this issue for a really long time and the food helped me to run away from my feelings and run away from all of that pain um I made a character of being the funny friend or the funny sibling or (laughs) the funny person that told the jokes and all of that Um, The people pleaser, I had a character of people pleasing where I would make a character when I hung out with my friends. I would have a character when I hung out with my family. I had a character when I hung out with my boyfriend or, you know, his family or whatever. There was a character that would people please and make sure that I received the love and attention that I wanted. So I would leave myself behind and do everything for everyone all the time. And this is why so many people in this world get burnt out. Um, the do it myself character, which is like, okay, I can't trust anyone. And this is all subconscious, by the way, this wasn't something I told myself every day, you know, okay, I can't trust people to do it. So I'm just going to do it myself. I don't want to bother anyone. That's another one. I didn't want to bother anyone. So I do it all myself. Um, I created a character that needed saving, a victim character, in much of my interactions with people. And it was mostly with men, with my father and with boyfriends, that I wanted to be saved by that man figure, by the um, the masculine that comes in and swoops me off my feet and makes me feel better. Um, so I would create situations that I needed saving from subconsciously in my life. Um, I also created the character of like, I don't care. And I'm going to keep a positive attitude. So I was like the positive one of the group, you know, always look to her because she's got the positive mindset and she can tell us the positive thing to do. Um, the special feeling special or being perfect and, and trying to look down on people. Um, this was a character I created to make myself feel better than someone that my ego needed to feel like I was more worthy than someone else. Um, disconnecting from my needs and my body, like I talked about earlier, you know, and then there was the drinking and the sex and the illnesses that I created to get attention. Um, and then I went into, so it was like, I went from one character, one side of the spectrum, like the victim side, to now I'm going to go to the other side of the spectrum, which is, the spiritual ego and, and this healing person and this healer and a coach and all these things. So I went from one side of the spectrum of being the victim and needing people and needing this and needing that. So then I created a whole nother character for myself, which was the one that people come to for healing, Mm -hmm. the spiritual healer, the energetic healer. Right. And, and it's just like, And now it's like I'm in between those because I'm trying to remove all of these 
things that I live, all of these characters that I've lived. And it's been a journey, <laughs> but we can't be rigid with, well, this is just who I am. You know, you hear so many times people say things like, oh, well, I am just funny. I'm just a funny person. That's just who I am. But if you lived in, like I, I lived in the, okay, I may be funny, but I realized as I was being funny, I would like look to somebody for a reaction or, you know, something like that. And I, I'm naturally funny. Now I'm realizing I'm a naturally funny person, but I had to live in that question of, but what if it's not who I am? Is it really who I am? Like, who am I? So it was living in that question that started to started me on this divine healing process of flowing through each of these characters and being able to see them very clearly in my day-to-day -day interactions. That's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. It is yeah, a lot. That's a lot. It is. Yeah, it is. And I will say that I feel like the energy lately, these transits lately, it's it's such rapid fire healing. It is one revelation after the next, after the next, after the next. And it happens so fast that you can't even process what you've just seen and realized before the next one comes in. And, yes. and we are really in it right now. We are, we are so in it. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't go back and listen to our last recording recently, like you did, but I do recall in there speaking about, um, how I was starting to see that I had an unhealthy relationship with my business, that it was suggested to me that I had a codependent relationship with my business. And when I started to examine that, that really opened up the door for me to see some very similar things to what you had talked about, about how basically for my entire life, I had created this series of identities for myself that were basically all rooted in fear. They, not a single one of them was aligned with who I truly was. They were all rooted in fear and me attempting to protect myself in some way, shape or form, generally from some sort of betrayal. And it started um, with my first choice of career to be a teacher. Um, I went to college as a music major because I loved the music, but I, ne I, I never really wanted to teach. But when you go to school as a music major, it's like, well, you can be a performance major or you can be an industry major or you can be a musical theater major. But if you want a guaranteed job, then you're going to go the education route because at least you can get a job as a music teacher. Well, I honestly, when I was younger, I didn't want anything to do with kids. I didn't want to have my own kids. I didn't like kids. I wanted nothing to do with kids. But mm -hmm. I went the education route because I, I felt like, well, I have to have a job. I have to earn money. I have to be able to support myself. So let me go this route, even though it's not really what I want to do. There was that fear around um, making money and supporting mm -hmm. myself and being something in this world. And um, so, so it, so it all started there. And then it led to um, an, another decision of, of uh, choosing to be a wife and a good wife and a wife who stays even when the marriage is bad um, because somehow I was trying to protect myself from the legacy of divorce that I came from because, um, you know, my mother was divorced several times. My father was divorced a couple of times. Even my grandparents who of their generation, divorce was not a common thing, but my grandmother was married three times. My grandfather was married twice. It was like, there, it was this legacy of divorce 
that I was trying to protect myself from. So I wasn't going to do that. And so out of pride um, and out of protection, I stayed in a marriage that I shouldn't have stayed in. And, um, you know, then I became a mother and I was going to be the best mother that I could be because I was going to protect my children from the things that I had experienced growing up. And so there was, it was just one thing after another, after another, where I created this, what I felt was protective um, then it went into religion and um, being the good Christian and being the best Christian that I could be. And if I lived by what the Bible said and kept God happy, then I would be protecting myself and protecting my family. But meanwhile, all of these choices that I was making, at the heart of it, I was betraying myself. I was trying to prevent betrayal. I was trying to prevent life and the world and other people from betraying me, but at the heart of it, I was betraying myself at every turn. And I have seen this so clearly in all of these recent transits and this rapid fire healing. And it's just like, wow, I, I I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm not going to continue to create these identities for myself and live from a place of fear when I'm not being genuine mm -hmm. to who I am and what I need and what I want at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's very similar along the lines to, to what you're going through. Yeah. And tuning into those needs, like, that you know something that I talked about at the beginning like we are basically taught to give away to cut off our needs and to know what we even need and you know betraying ourselves is kind of the way of the world like we've been taught that ourselves like we can that we don't know the answers we have to look to doctors we have to look to lawyers we have to look to whatever Jesus God we have to look everywhere to find these answers and it doesn't leave us much trust for ourselves so even when we start um looking at all of these different characters that we're playing you know what I realized is all of these characters I created was because I didn't have trust for myself mm -hmm. because I was taught not to and that's okay because that's what the world thus far has been taught you know I have I have a this I don't know if I've told this story on our podcast before but it was the very first time I really remember not knowing myself and not trusting myself you know I was a child and I went to a Catholic school and a Catholic church and we went to confession and um I, I went up to the priest and you know he asked like what are your sins and I was I don't know, eight, nine, 10 years old. And I was like, I don't, I'm, I'm, when I was standing in line, I'm like, I don't have sins. What? I don't, I don't know. I didn't do anything. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So then when I went up there, I started making things up because I was taught my heart is wicked. Yeah. I was taught that I don't know anything that I'm a bad person just because I'm a person. And so we, we put these things in the, in our subconscious because we don't want to feel that every day. Consciously, our brain is going to protect us and throw that into our subconscious. So we're going to live every day as if we are bad and sinful and wicked and not even realize it. And then look around and say, why is my life not what I, what I wanted? I can, I can boldly say now that if you are not getting what you want or if your life does not look how you want it to look you still have some self-hate some self-doubt some trust issues with yourself mm -hmm. that's and when I first started this journey and someone told me that I thought they were kind of crazy because I'm like no I, I have everything I want no I had everything that I wanted at that point 
that I was told I wanted, you know, I had the college degree and I had the, the house and I had this and I had that all the things that I was told that I should have by this age. And I was like, yeah, I have everything I want, but I didn't trust myself to be like, no, <laughs> just because you say that I need this, that's not what I, you know? So it's just, mm -hmm. it's that mm -hmm. at, at, at the base of all of this, because yesterday I had um, an incident that it was actually something about my dog and the medicine that she's taking. And I started crying because like, is this the right option for her? Is this, am I doing the right thing for her? And then as I looked deeper into that, it was like, wait a second. I don't trust myself at all with anything at a, at a really deep level. Mm -hmm. and, and then it kind of um, came to me that in, in many past lives, even and in my, in this lifetime, previously I have made decisions that have hurt people I have made decisions that you know hurt myself and, and I've made decisions that have hurt my home and and everything mm -hmm. and those decisions though were made out of that protection I made these decisions because I thought I needed to for the protection I thought I needed to to get attention and love I, I needed, I needed a protection from feeling the pain of all these things that I didn't want to feel. So yeah, it's just, so once I like went into all of this, I realized like, I don't trust myself. And I cried and I cried and I was like, I don't even trust me. Mm -hmm. And my logical brain started to come in and, and try to like make sense of why I was crying because I just couldn't stop. And I had to, I had to just let my logical brain go for a minute mm -hmm. and just try it out because I just read in a book, love the, Re love the real word of God part three by Shauna Starr. It's amazing. I recommend those books highly. Um, sh she says logic was created to like dumb down the magic or explain away the magic of the world. Mm -hmm. So my, my magical divine healing process right now is not logical at all. And so when, when, you know, someone be like, what's wrong? I have no explanation for it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Lots of pain that I need to let go of. <laughs> so I mean, this is, it's just such a process of trusting ourselves. And I feel like that's at, a, at in very simple terms, all of this healing work comes back to self-love, self-trust. And that's it. <laughs> simple as that. <laughs> yeah. And it, and it, and it sounds so simple, but the work to get there is intense and long and profound Absolutely. and you know that that logic piece is is really hard to get past because we've got so much information coming at us especially these days we are in the information age we have we have the entire world at our fingertips and yep. there's nothing that we don't have access to and yep. it's really information overload. It is too much of a good thing. I frequently think I have way too much knowledge locked up in here. Like I know too much. I am too smart for my own good <laughs> because um, all of that external stuff that we bring in and we bring in and we bring in, it becomes so difficult to turn off when we need to turn it off and we need to tap in really to our inner selves, really to our higher self, to our intuition. It's really hard to turn off that logical brain and um, understand that our power, that we hold the power. We do. We think we've been taught to outsource it all. We've yep. been taught that we don't have any of it. 
we've been yep. taught that it all comes from without us, that everybody else is the expert and we know nothing. Um, we've been taught that, you know, this book holds more power than we do, or these words hold more power than we do, or this figure in the sky holds more power than we do. And, um, you know, you, you mentioned earlier that just because you are human, um, you are sinful and deserve nothing but death. And that was a core being a core belief of mine for a long time that had a massive negative impact on my self-worth and yep. my ability to love myself and my ability to believe in my own power. I believe that because I was born onto this earth, I deserved hell and everything in it. Yep. And that is really hard to come back from. Yep. <laughs> It, it, it is genuinely hard to come back from. And so that process of deconditioning uh, runs deep when you have been conditioned in that way and you have been made to believe that you hold no power at all and everything comes from outside of you and you just do what you're told because yep. that's how this world works. And I, I truly believe that our power, until we become conscious of what we're doing in our lives to feel powerful, your power, your true power is going to stay locked in a box in your subconscious and it's going to be locked up there and you're going to continue to, to look outside of yourself to feel powerful. And that's, that's what all of these characters that I created they made me feel powerful. Mm -hmm. They made me feel like I had control over my life. Mm -hmm. Because all of my true power, my true, like standing in my power without the fight, without the pain, without the, you know, a lot of people feel like you have to fight for your truth and you have to, no, this is another character to, to make yourself feel powerful. And so until you start unlocking that box and that's what this, this healing work basically, again, at the simplest level is unlocking that box and just saying like, okay, I'm ready. Um, and, and doing and going to where you're divinely led, but until you have that, I, that, um, conscious awareness, I guess, of your intuition you're going to have to look at what's going around in your world mm -hmm. on a, because you, you're not going to be able to see what's in your subconscious because it's there for a reason. It's there. You locked that up a long mm -hmm. time ago. For protection. Mm -hmm. So you're not going to be able to see easily at the beginning and shoot pretty much the whole journey. Yeah. It, it automatically, because so you're going to have to see, okay, well, this is happening in my life and I don't like it. So why am I holding on to it? What is this teaching me? What kind of ways do I need to love myself more to get what I actually want here? And the reason a lot of us don't go into this is because that means losing people. That means moving. That might mean you know, losing a job, losing friends, losing, stepping away from things. Mm -hmm. And that can be a little scary at, at the beginning to make that decision. And a lot of people just, instead of, instead of doing that, are going to make all of these things, food, drinking, <laughs> all these things to be distracted from, well, I don't want to feel that. I don't, I don't know. I don't, I'm not getting what I want in my life. So what's the point and all these things. Mm -hmm. So it's just being able to say like, okay, is this a character I'm creating? And for me, it was the tapping that really helped me to, to, to remove that logical mind and really get into my body and into my emotions. Mm -hmm. And now it's simple when something happens, I can instantly be like, oh my gosh, I'm playing this. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, 
she's this coach on Facebook and I really don't like her content at all. <laughs> and I don't, it doesn't resonate with me or anything, but I realized that when I was watching it, I felt a bit of superiority <laughs> and, and I had to step back and be like, holy crap. I don't enjoy this at all. I'm doing this to feel good. I'm doing this to feel better. I'm doing this to, to feel powerful. Mm -hmm. And it's just those little shifts, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. and, and you, you see them so much more quickly now. Yeah. It's like there's so much more self-awareness that as mm -hmm. soon as something like that happens, you can see yep. it. And once you see it, you clear it out. Yep. You clear it out. I, ha I had a situation like that uh, a couple of weeks ago, and this is like totally random, but uh, on the weekends, I get up before my husband does and um, have some, you know, my quiet time with my coffee. And um, when he gets up, he opens the blinds and, and I'm in a separate room. And, but our blinds, we have a couple of big windows on, on the front of the house and the blinds are like really squeaky. When you, when you open them, it's like this rah, 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 squeaky sound. And um, I was noticing that on those mornings when, when I would be, you know, having my coffee and he got up and I knew he was up and I knew, he, you know, he's opening the blinds. I hear the squeaking and I would feel like all of this anxiety, like building up in my chest because I, I hear that sound. And I realized very quickly what it was. He opens the blinds when he gets up because he needs to see out into the world. He is very much an outdoor person. He works outdoors. He does not like to be indoors. And when he is indoors, he needs to see outside. He needs to see the sky. He needs to see the world. So for him, opening the blinds is allowing himself to see out. But for me, when he opens those blinds, it lets the world in. Mm -hmm. And that feels scary to me. And even though I logically know that nobody's coming in through the window, you know, nobody can even see in. I, I know that it's, it's not a logical thing. It's just that feeling of the, the, the blinds are open. The, the world is coming in. And once I saw it for what it was, it cleared. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the, the next time that happened and, you know, I'm sitting there having my coffee and I hear the squeak, squeak, squeak of the blinds and no issue, no anxiety. Yep. And, and, and that's totally random and weird, but it's just an example of, how things happen, we're becoming so aware of things so yep. quickly now. It's like you see it for what it is, you acknowledge it, and it passes, and it's over. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a great example the, the logic and the magic because, you know, the logical brain is like, okay, nobody's coming in. Like, why am I feeling this? It's stupid, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you – if to to unlock that – that power and that magic in there it's like okay but what am I really feeling like it's not about I've said this a million times on our podcast but it's my favorite thing like it's not about the surface level thing that's happening right this is so deeper than just the blinds yeah. you know mm -hmm. and that's how you unlock the magical box mm -hmm. in yourself you know by yeah. seeing that but also being able to live in that like you know I mean obviously that was a very instant shift for you, but if it wasn't like, you know, I've been in situations similar, not with blinds, but you know, and mm -hmm. I, I like, okay, so why am I feeling this? And I just let, let it be. And then I, I let the situations come to show me what I'm actually believing about me in whatever was happening surf, surface level, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah, it's just the magical subconscious box. <laughs> Letting it out, letting, letting that flow out is, you have to put the logical mind aside and that's that difficult to do. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we had a great discussion. Is there anything else you want to say? Um, or? 
Yeah, well, all I have to say is that these shifts keep coming rapid fire. We are still two days out from this uh, lunar eclipse in Scorpio. So I know it's not done yet. I know there's more revelation to come. There's more clarity to come in. Uh, so listeners out there, if you guys are going through it too, like we are, just hang on, um, get through it one day at a time. Feel free to reach out to us. We are happy to... Uh, have a conversation with you and, and discuss what's going on. And as always, if you have anything that you would like to hear our thoughts and opinions on, feel free to let us know and we will uh, consider that for discussion in the future. Yes, thank yeah. you. Okay, thanks guys. Until next time.